everyone. So glad you're here today. As you probably could tell, today is no normal, ordinary day here at The Point. Today is FX Sunday, Family Experience Sunday, where kids bring their parents to church. And today is going to be a day filled with fun, excitement, passionate, movement-filled worship, interactive experiences, and even better than all of that, an opportunity to encounter Jesus right here, right now, together as family. Aunts, uncles, singles, moms, dads, kids, cousins, all of us together because we believe God has created us for this, for community, for family, for the next generation. So right now, stand up, buckle up, and get ready to go all in as we get loud here at the point because FX Sunday is in full effect in three, two, one.
this incredible group. Kids, you showed up big and brought your adults with you to our very first FX Sunday. All right, quick show of hands, kids. How many of you woke up your adults with your kazoos from last week, this morning? Anybody? And adults, be honest. Quick show of hands from you. How many didn't even give your kiddos a chance to do that because you threw that thing away before it even came in the house last week? Well, all right. However you woke up and however you came, we're super thankful that you're here. FX Sunday is the day that kids bring your adults to church. And it's all about experiencing Jesus together as a whole family, whoever you consider family. And kids, you just make things better. We're already having a blast with you here. So let's just keep it rolling. All right, kiddos, I got a job for you. Look around you. Is there someone next to you who's here for the very first time this morning? Look around. Or is it your first time right here at the point? Okay, I see that hand. That is awesome. Okay, nudge that adult next to you and ask them to pearl out their phone real quick and text hello to 812-359-1799 so we can connect. And speaking of connecting, if you're feeling really brave or you've been visiting for a few weeks now and you still don't know much about who we are, you can join us for a 20 minute hang we call Starting Point, immediately following this service in room 109. It's just out to your right when you're in the lobby. Speaking of fun, who is ready to grab an apple dumpling and ride the avalanche at Oktoberfest? Whoop whoop! Yes! Friends, in between snacks and rides, have you ever noticed the Point Ice and Water booth? Did you know that we supply all the ice for the food vendors and bottles of water for all the people for a dollar? And here's the really cool thing. Did you know that we sell this water to help give clean water to kids just like you who don't have any access to clean water where they live around the globe? Can you imagine that? I know, I can't. And so I love that our church is on mission to change that. But to make the greatest impact we can through Oktoberfest, we need tons of volunteers to work the water booth shifts. If you have an adult sitting next to you who hasn't signed up to work yet, I want you to turn to them right now and say, sign up today when I count to three. Are you ready? One, two, three, sign up today. Guys, you are good recruiters and adults. You can sign up right now on our website at gotothepoint.com, on the app, or by adding your name to one of the open shifts at the table out in the lobby when you leave today. Guys, you know what's cool about the adults around here? They're generous because they want to give back to God what's been given to them. They do this by volunteering with you and Point Kids, greeting you as you walk in the doors each Sunday, and a whole bunch of them give money each week to help cool things like this happen and keep the lights on. Isn't that awesome? They do that because they want to help you get to know Jesus. That's what the church is all about. They can do that four different ways. And kids, this is the cool thing. If you want to give, you can do it one of these ways too. People can give on our website at gotothepoint.com. They can text the point give to 888-364-4483 on their phone. And can you believe that some of the adults still use snail mail and send checks to the church? Hold up. Show of hands, kids. Have you ever even seen a check? Okay, there's a few of you. There are also black boxes on the wall in the back of this room for collection. It is seriously a privilege to give to the ministries that help point people to Jesus. You see, once you know him, you just wanna be part of all the things he's up to. And how do we know what he's up to? Well, one of those ways is through prayer. But I'm telling you what, prayer can feel like a gigantic mystery, am I right? Like, can God still hear me if I don't have my eyes closed and my hands clasped? But why does talking to God seem so hard? Well, it's because we make it harder than it really is. You see, Jesus actually taught us how to pray in the Bible. He even said, I kid you not, pray like this. So, beginning next week, Pastor John is going to help all of us adults return to the simplicity of Jesus' example and practice praying like he did. And kids, now you know what to ask your adults about during lunch next Sunday after church. Okay, but enough about next Sunday, because we're right here, right now, and my soul is bursting, ready to experience all that God has for us this morning. So get up on your feet, and let's get our praise on! Oh, good morning, church. Are we still alive out there? Come on, let's put our hands together. All right, repeat after me. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. 
everybody. How are we doing? Good. Good. My name is Pastor Tim. And I'm Pastor Joel. And uh, this morning is going to be very interactive if you haven't figured that out already. And so right now, something I want everybody in the room to do is think of a really good friend of yours, get their name, put it in your head, and on three, we're going to shout it out all at the same time, okay? So get that friend's name in your head. One, two, three. Hey! Two. Awesome. Uh, I, I shouted out the name of a really good friend of mine um, who serves at another church. His name is Keith. And I'm thankful for who he is in my life. I'll tell you what, another friend I'm thankful for is Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim and I are friends. And I appreciate the fact that Pastor Tim is trustworthy. 
and that I can count on him and that he is there for me and that he helps hold me accountable and he prays for me and he lifts me up when I'm down. And so I'm thankful for Pastor Tim's oh, friendship. Shucks. Oh, so, I love you, man. Uh, this morning we are talking about friendship. It's kind of like living in harmony with other people, having good friends, because in life, together is better, right? right? And going through life, it's a little bit like this ladder. So we put this ladder up, and you got places to go. You got things you need to do in life, right? And God gives us a lot of things in life to help us through life. But one of those things is really good friends. And with a really good friend, like Pastor Joel, holding me up throughout life, I can get through a lot of things, right? Go higher, Tim. I can go higher, right? And even higher. Oh, do do I need to go higher? Higher? All right. And we're good. I don't need to touch the ceiling today. But... Again, there's lots of things. If you're having a bad day, a friend can help you out. If you want to try something new, a friend can help you out. If life gets a little shaky, a really good friend that you trust a lot can help you out in life, right? So Pastor John is going to come out in a little bit and keep talking about friendship with us uh, and teach us our bottom line that friends stand up for one another, just like this ladder couldn't stand up without Pastor Joel on the other side. Awesome. And we, the kids all month upstairs have been learning about harmony, that we are better together. And we thought, what better way than to do an interactive game with you here today where you will actually be the backup band for what we're going to sing? How cool is that, right? And so for those of you who are rhythmically challenged, we've got help for you. Okay. So I'm going to divide you into three sections. This section over here is Team Green. Let's hear it for Team Green. All right, you're going to be my body slap people, all right? So what that means is you simply do this. Everybody do that, section green. Awesome, you're incredible. All right, this section right here is team red, and you're going to be my snap people, all right? If you can't snap your fingers, you're just going to pretend, but snap your fingers with me. Ready? And snap, snap. Oh, listen to that. Y'all are good. Cool. All right, this is team blue. Let's hear it for team blue. Now... This is the hardest section, all right? You're my clap team. And we're gonna show you this rhythm, but, but everybody just clap with me. All right, it's gonna get harder than that, but just wait. All right, okay. So does everybody got what they're doing? You're the green button. You're the red button. You're the blue button. And we're gonna do those motions when that button lights, all right? Are you ready in the back? Kyle, hit this for me, all right? Here we go. Clap, get ready. Just the body slaps, there we go. Y'all got it. You're so good. You're like a band. Let's go on the road. Awesome. All right, we got my snaps. Here we go. Ready, get ready. Two, three, get ready. Oh, yeah. You're on the offbeat. I don't know if you know that or not, but that's the offbeat. And you're doing really good. Yeah, yeah. All right, I ready claps. This gets a little tricky. Here we go. Three, four. Again. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, all right, we're going to review that. Are you ready? Clap, 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 clap. All right, you ready? There you go. You got it. All right, we're gonna sing a little harmony together. All right, here we go. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. None else can heal all our souls diseases. No! Yeah. 
Point was so incredibly talented. We are, we are church. Give yourselves one more hand. Come on. We are truly better together. It's God's design. The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. After God sent the Holy Spirit, the new church began to grow by leaps and bounds. But the religious leaders wanted to stamp it out. They arrested Jesus' followers and threw them in prison. One leader, a man named Saul, was determined to get rid of as many believers as possible. Saul got permission from the high priest to travel to the faraway city of Damascus and arrest believers there. But as Saul approached Damascus, a brilliant light shone down. Jesus spoke to Saul. Blinded, Saul was led into the city. There he didn't eat or drink for three days. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Dead by the light. Y'all know that song? <laughs> we got a story in Acts chapter 9. And that, you know, a good way that I like to remember what happens in all the books of Acts is there's different words for each chapter. And Acts chapter 9 is the word shine. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say Acts chapter 9 and you say shine. Acts chapter 9. Shine. That's how you can remember that in Acts chapter 9, this guy named Saul, who was a pretty bad dude, kiddos, he was like the guy you don't want to meet in a dark alley. Right? And on the road to Damascus, he was going to like take all those Jesus followers there and put them in prison. And on the road, you heard about our story before the story. What happened to Saul? Did anybody want to guess? Kiddos, what happened to Saul? Blinded by the light. Right, kids? Yeah? He was blinded by the light. So I need some help today. We're going to have a little interaction with our Bible story. So I need a Saul volunteer. Who wants to be a Saul volunteer? I got all kinds of hands. And Lily, how about you? We'll have a Sauline today. Come on, everybody give it up for Sauline. Come on up here, Saul. All right, so Saul, you were blinded by the light. Okay, come up here and stand. Right, and say, oh, the light, my eyes. You say that. Say, oh, the light, my eyes. <laughs> okay, so here, put these on. You wanna put those on? So you're blind now, you can't see, okay? So Saul was blinded by the light and he didn't know what to do and so he had to go the rest of the way to Damascus and say, I'm really hungry. You say that, say, I'm really hungry. She's hungry because she didn't, Sauline didn't eat for three days or drink. And she said, what am I going to do? Saul said, what am I going to do? And God always comes through when we have trouble in life. Did you know that? And Saul was blinded and he was talking to a guy in Damascus ahead of Saul named Ananias and told him, I know a guy named Saul who's going to need your help. So I need a volunteer, Ananias. How about an adult? I want to get some adults going on. We need an adult volunteer. There are way less hands for adults. Bob, thank you, Bob. Come on up. Everybody give it up for Bob. <laughs> whoop, whoop. So here, here's Bob. And we're, we're glad that you're here. Bob, you're, you're now Ananias. Say, I'm Ananias. I'm Ananias. And the Lord spoke to me. You say that. And the Lord spoke to me. And he me. said, go lay hands on Saul. Go lay hands on Saul. So that he don't have to be blind no more. So he don't have to be blind no more. Okay, so Ananias comes and, and lays his hands on Saul's shoulders or head. That's great. Take, yeah, take him out and say, blindness be gone. Blindness be gone. Okay, you take off your glasses. And now you yell, I can see. Yes, they said, woo! Yeah, that's awesome. And all of a sudden, something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes, and he could see. And you know what, kids and parents? It wasn't just that Saul could physically see. But all of a sudden, Jesus had come in, and Saul could spiritually see. He saw that God had changed his life forever, that Jesus, who died and then rose again, had changed his life forever. And Paul got, Saul got really excited he, and say, I'm really excited, and, and say, now I want to get baptized. Saul got up, and he got baptized after he had some good food. So I, we're going to baptize you, Lily, okay? You ready? Everybody count on the count of three. One. Two, three. I'm just kidding. 
Did you, you didn't bring a swimsuit? Okay, well here, we, we do, we also do sprinkling in the church, so there you go, you were baptized, Lily, there we go. So you were baptized, and then all of a sudden you got really excited about Jesus, and you started telling everybody that Jesus is the point. So here, hold this up, and say, Jesus is the point. Jesus is the point, Jesus is the point. yeah, give it up for Saul. All right, you're done, Ananias, go home. But once Saul was telling everybody that Jesus is the point, there were some people in Damascus that weren't so happy because they thought, they thought that Saul was coming to get rid of all these crazy weird Jesus followers. And so they started to plot and say, we need to take Saul out. And all the people who were Jesus followers heard about the plot to take Saul out. And we don't want that to happen. Say, we don't want that to happen. So I need the friends of Saul. I need some volunteers, all right? And I need some bigger boy teen, okay, right here, come on up, um, come on up. Um, we got some strong girls. Uh, there's a strong girl back early, come on up. Um, let's do one more, um, way in the back in the red. Yeah, you, you're pointing at your head. There you go, come on up. Okay, so you guys said, oh no, they're gonna try to get Saul. Hurry up, we need all four. So you guys say that. Oh no, they're gonna try to get you, Saul. Say that to her. We need to get you out of here quick. And then you say, hey, look, there's a laundry basket right there. Now, this is not culturally correct. I don't know if they had laundry baskets. Surely they weren't plastic and white. But they went and got the laundry basket. Okay, so, uh, Saline, I'm going to pick you up. You're going to get in the laundry basket, okay? So you guys get around. You get on this corner. You get on this corner. You get on that. No, you come right here on the side. You go in there. And you say, we got to get Saul out of here. So all you're going to do, you're not going to throw her or launch her or anything, okay? You're just going to put her down right here. Are you ready? Hold on. Do you trust your friends? Lily's like, no, I do not <laughs> trust my friends. Okay, so on the count of three, get her out of here and put her on the, put her on the ground. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, yay! Okay, all you friends, go sit down. Saul, you stay, you stay in the basket. All right, so Saul was safe. Say, whoo, that was close. Oh, let's try that again. Y'all, that was lame. Ready? One, two, three. Woo, that was close. Man, so Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit and wanted to go tell everybody about Jesus. So he headed back to Jerusalem where all his buddy old pals were there who also, well, they didn't really know what happened to Saul, but they were going to find out. And when they showed up in Jerusalem, guess what? There were some people there in Jerusalem that were not happy to see Saul. So you guys are all going to be Jerusalem, okay? You're the heckling crowd. You're going to say, Saul, go away. Ready? One, two, three. Saul, I'm so sorry. These mean people don't want you here. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Here, I'm gonna, let, let's put you back up here so people can see you, okay? There you go. You're out of the basket. So you're in Jerusalem, and there's all these people. Now, what are we going to do if these people don't want you here? I wonder if God could send some more people to help you. And God was talking to a guy named Barnabas. Everybody say Barnabas, one, two, three. Barnabas. And he said, Barnabas, I need you to go and I need you to help Saul. All right, so I need a Barnabas. Let's see, I haven't gone over here much. White dress right there, come on up. Bar yep, come on up. So we gotta give it up for Barnabas. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So here's Barnabas, okay? All right, so you're gonna say these things when I tell you. One at a time, okay? And you gotta say them loud, Barnabas, okay. okay? So all these people can hear you, all right? So Barnabas heard from the Lord to go and help Saul. He, he was gonna be, he was Barnabas Aline, yeah. <laughs> was gonna help Saul out and God spoke to them and she, she or he went and talked to all of Jerusalem and said some pretty powerful things. At first he said he told them about Saul's journey and all that he had seen. Say this, Saul has seen the Lord. Did you hear that, Jerusalem? Say it one more time, because they didn't hear you. Saul has seen the Lord. That's right, Saul has seen the Lord. And then he said he told the Lord had spoken to him. He told them all how the Lord had spoken to Saul, that God was using Saul. Now you say the second one, ready? We'll go like that. Oh, I threw the second one out. Okay, say this one, say it real loud, tell them. The, the Lord has spoken to Saul. The Lord has spoken to Saul, that's a big deal, right? And all the people heard, and then Barnabas also told them a powerful thing that Saul had preached without fear in Jesus' name. You say that one, say it real, there you go, girl. Yes. Saul has preached without fear in, in Jesus' name in Damascus. Woo! And you know what? 
All of a sudden, all you mean folks in Jerusalem said, well, Saul isn't so bad. We're gonna say, welcome, Saul. Because we really love Saul, so say it again. Man, see how easily people love you and then hate you? It's just back and forth, back and forth. But now they loved you. And everybody get it for Barnabas. Barnabas is wonderful. And everybody give it up for Sauline. Go down, Sauline, your mom and dad. Woo, way to go, Saul. And all throughout Saul's journey of God meeting with him, Jesus showing up in his life, changing everything about his life. He had an encounter with the risen Jesus that changed everything. And it didn't just change Saul. If you notice, it changed all the people around him in his community. As God began to speak into the lives of others and the community of Jesus followers to come together as a community. And we learn together today that the most important part of God calling us together is to believe that friends stand up for one another. Amen? That's why we're here. Kids, that's why you are here. Because we want you to know that the community is what God made us for and that you can trust that friends will stick up for one another. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we're grateful for that truth this morning, for the, the amazing story of Saul, who eventually became the Apostle Paul, whose life was changed forever as your light shone upon him and revealed to him that he was blind before. And that moment of blindness was really just a transformation that allowed him to see what life was really all about. And you were calling him for a new purpose and calling him to live in a new power and calling him to be captivated by your risen Jesus, God, in our lives. And we're thankful for Saul's story and we're thankful for the friends that surrounded Saul. And God, we're thankful that, for the friends that surround us today. That we can be here together, kids and adults and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and friends, cousins, neighbors, together. You call us because we are better together. And we're grateful, Lord. And I pray for the one here today. Maybe there's a kid, maybe an adult, who's feeling a little alone feeling like maybe they don't have the friends that we talked about today. I pray, God, as we worship now, that they would look around and see in a real and present way that they are not alone and that, God, you have made us for this, and we're grateful. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand on our feet and worship our risen Savior today. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts today, right? So, uh, kids, raise your hand if your adult has a cell phone. Yes? Okay, your adult has a cell phone. That's great. It probably looks a little bit something like this, right? And one thing about cell phones is they are very powerful, right? They're, thing, they're a very powerful tool, very powerful device that we have to be careful with. So it's something that your parents, your adults might have some limits for you on, and that's why. But they can do really good things too, like load a Parent Q app on here, uh, which helps them know information about you and your age and what's going on at this point in your life, but also keeps them informed about what's going on upstairs in our Point Kids spaces. So I want you to point at your adult you're with this morning with your finger. It's rude to point typically, but point at your adult this morning and wag your finger at them and say, use the parent cue. Use the parent cue. Awesome. And for those who have, for those who have adults with flip phones, uh, we send home a paper copy at the beginning of each month with the parent cue, so they, can, they have no excuse. They can use that and know what's going on and talk to you about what you're learning upstairs. Um, and one other thing is, all of you kids who love Point Kids, you know that it takes loving, caring adults to serve up there and be with you. And Miss Kelly could just use a few more. We've been growing. Those of you kiddos who are in our 11 o'clock service or come to that regularly, you know we're busting at the seams and Miss Kelly could use a few more loving and caring adults. So at the end of church, if you think that your adult would be really great to hang out with and learn about Jesus from, you walk them to Miss Kelly at Guest Central and they'll talk to her about helping out on Sunday mornings, okay? Sound good? Now let's get on our feet and have some worship. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight 
It was my turn Till I met you today. Um, for those of you who are new here or have been coming for a little bit and want to know a little bit more about what we're about, um, there are some people who's going to be in the room to your right as you're leaving the sanctuary. There's going to be donuts. We'd love to meet with you, get to know you, have you get to know us. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Have a great week.